Undercovered. Because some stories just need to be told. Others told more. A few told more fully. Or perhaps in a different way. If not in another light. Welcome to Conversation about some of the stuff that's just Undercovered. This is Undercovered, the podcast with Bing Kimpo. Noong isang linggo, inilabas ng Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines o CBCP President at Davao Archbishop Romulo Valles ang kanyang pastoral letter para sa 2021 Year of Misio Agentes na nagsisilbing tulong at ikang guide sa paghahanda natin sa pagunita ng 500 years of Christianity dito sa Pilipinas sa darating na 2021. Mabasahin ko muna ang pastoral letter ni Archbishop Valles tapos kakausapin natin siya tungkol dito. Pastoral letter for 2021, Year of Misio Agentes. Dearly beloved people of God, The Philippine Church rejoices as it enters a national celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in our treasured homeland. Five centuries ago, we received the marvelous gift of the Christian faith. Our hearts overflow with joy and gratitude. Why of all the nations and peoples in Asia was the Philippines chosen by God to be among the first to receive this precious gift? The clear answer is simply this. God's magnanimous, overflowing love. We recall what God told His people, Israel, regarding His choice. It was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord set His heart on you and chose you, for you are really the smallest of all nations. It was because the Lord loved you and because of His fidelity. Only God's freely given love can illuminate the choice of the Filipino people to receive this valuable gift of faith. The Christian faith arrived and prospered in our land through the dedication and heroic sacrifices of thousands of men and women missionaries from various parts of the world. They treasured the gift of faith they had received and desired to share this gift with others. As the theme chosen by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines for this fifth centennial notes, all Christians are gifted to give. This giftedness motivated generous missionaries over the centuries. It must also inflame the hearts of all of us today to engage in mission here at home and in other countries. Missio ad gentes. Indeed, this is part of Jesus' mission mandate to his disciples. What you have received as a gift, give. As a gift, we pray for a missionary renewal of our church, both at home, ad intra, and beyond our borders, ad extra, during our celebration of the 500 years and into the future. Missionary Transformation Our beloved Pope Francis, who visited us in 2015, is committed to the missionary renewal of the entire church. We can take inspiration from his document, Evangelii Gaudium, The Joy of the Gospel. He asserts that we need an evangelizing church that comes out of herself, not a church that is self-referential and lives within herself, of herself, for herself. Francis says, I dream of a missionary option, that is, a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything so that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitably channeled for the evangelization of today's world rather than for her self-preservation. All renewal in the church must have mission as its goal if it is not to fall prey to a kind of ecclesial introversion. We seek to renew our mission enthusiasm here at home, as well as Missio Agentes, mission to other nations and peoples. Pope Francis continues, Missionary outreach is paradigmatic for all the church's activity. We need to move 
from a pastoral ministry of mere conservation to a decidedly missionary pastoral ministry. I want to emphasize that what I am trying to express here has programmatic significance and important consequences. Throughout the world, let us be permanently in a state of mission. We must seek to put all things in a missionary key. We recall the challenge of Pope John Paul II during his 1981 visit to our church. I wish to tell you of my special desire that the Filipinos will become the foremost missionaries of the church in Asia. This is a clear invitation to engage in Missio Ad Gentes. Pope Francis's insights about church missionary renewal comes from his deep personal relationship with Christ. He writes, I invite all Christians everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ. I ask all of you to do this unfailingly each day. A pivotal insight of Pope Francis is that we are all missionary disciples. Through baptism, all the members of the people of God have become missionary disciples. All Christians are agents of evangelization. Missionary evangelization calls for personal involvement on the part of each baptized. Each Christian is a missionary to the extent that he or she has encountered the love of God in Christ Jesus. We no longer say that we are disciples and missionaries, but rather that we are always missionary disciples. Joy, a convincing sign. For Pope Francis, salvation history is a great stream of joy, which we must also enter. Let the joy of faith be revived, because God's mercies never end. Unfortunately, there are Christians whose lives seem like Lent without Easter. An evangelizer must never look like someone who has just come back from a funeral. We must not become careless and disillusioned pessimists, sour pusses. May the world of our time, which is searching, sometimes with anguish, sometimes with hope, be enabled to receive the good news, not from evangelizers who are dejected, discouraged, impatient, or anxious, but from ministers of the gospel whose lives glow with fervor, who have first received the joy of Christ. We all must not end up stifling the joy of mission, both here at home and in other lands. Mercy, today's pathway in mission. Pope Francis continually insists that mercy is the very essence of God. In his Misericordia Vultus, The Face of Mercy, Francis expresses it this way. Mercy is God's identity card. He said, we need constantly to contemplate the mystery of mercy. Francis quotes St. Thomas Aquinas, who asserts that mercy is the greatest of all virtues. All the others revolve around it. It is proper to God to have mercy. Mercy is the very foundation of the church's life. All of her pastoral activity should be caught up in the tenderness she makes present to believers. Nothing in her preaching and in her witness to the world can be lacking in mercy. The church's very credibility is seen in how she shows merciful and compassionate love. The church is commissioned to announce the mercy of God, the beating heart of the gospel, which in its own way must penetrate the heart and mind of every person. As the church is charged with the task of the new evangelization, the theme of mercy needs to be proposed again and again with new enthusiasm and renewed pastoral action. In our parishes, communities, associations, and movements, in a word, Wherever there are Christians, everyone should find an oasis of mercy. Conclusion Pope Francis's profound thoughts on missionary renewal, joy, and mercy provide a solid compass to guide us as individuals and communities during our 500-year celebration and in the year 2021, which is dedicated to Missio Agentes, Mission to all peoples. With Pope Francis, we ask two graces of the Lord. Let us not allow ourselves to be robbed 
of missionary vigor. Let us not allow ourselves to be robbed of missionary enthusiasm. We remain constant in prayer, asking our two canonized foreign missionary saints, Lorenzo Ruiz and Pedro Colungsod, to intercede for us so that our loving God will always abundantly bless our church in the Philippines and all her many missionary endeavors. For the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, Romulo G. Valles, Archbishop of Davao, President, Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. This is Undercover the Podcast with Bing Kimpo. Archbishop, your pastoral letter starts by saying, 500 years ago, we received the marvelous gift of the Christian faith. How is our faith a gift, Archbishop? How is it a gift at this time of suffering and uncertainty? Uh, okay, uh, very good opening uh, query or question uh, uh, being. Uh, let me quickly uh, uh, premise what I would say uh, by, by saying that this pastoral letter is the ninth of the the, the, the ninth and the last year. Remember, we have nine year preparation for the great jubilee of uh, celebrating the 500 years of Christianity in the nation, in the country. So this is the ninth and last. And uh, the ninth and last year is uh, declared as year of Missio Agentis, as it is under in the top of the pastoral letter, mission to the people. Huh? And uh, so we have this pastoral letter, and uh, and the first paragraph you pick it up. Uh, uh, it is like celebrating uh, the gift of faith. Uh, we are gifted. Uh, 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 at the end of your uh, first question is in the context of suffering and uncertainty. Now, gift, uh, gift. How is it uh, like like a, a gift? A gift. Being, no, let us say, it is not a, a, for me not a pure gift when it is given to you because you deserve it. Parang my 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 connection na, parang you merit it. Uh, but it is you you and I have experienced when it is given out of the blue, and it is a, a gift so so fitting. Parang the the other party knows what you need. That is gift. Uh, that is why in, in the letter we said, why, why the Philippines? We cannot fathom it, but simply what we, what we know that it is so gracious, it is so loving, we don't merit it. Uh, so that's part of being a, a gift. But also, being, let, allow me, uh, thank you for this occasion because I hope some people would hear. Another dimension of that, of, of the old people, see the flip side of that, of that uh, giftedness is that Faith becomes a gift truly when we are taught, we are formed to realize that we are dependent on somebody. That's, that realization is a gift because oftentimes we tend to stand on our own. Uh, we are the captain of the ship. Para. So that's a gift because, because to know that somebody so powerful, so loving is there for you, and then when when it is a gift again, uh, again, when you realize this relationship of being a child to a father, uh, and then to further realize that ikaw, you are created according to the image and likeness of that father. Ah, you you share your and I'm, I'm I'm sure I hope I'm saying it in plain words. Ah, it is not just the all-powerful God, the merciful God, but He gave me part of that is in me. Iba? Sa Bible, we are created according to the image and likeness of God. So, two sides, two sides. It is given, pure gift. Wow, He knows my, my need. Wala akong why I don't merit this. Uh, then that's a wonderful gift. And then, to realize deeply that 
that give allows us to see who we are related to somebody who loves us. So that's 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 the gift. Now, I like your question at the end, but okay, blah blah blah. <laughs> but you said in the context of suffering and uncertainty. Okay, that's 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 nice. In the context of suffering and uncertainty, when you know being in 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 life that. And yan si Papa, and yan si Mama, and yan si my good friend. He will he will not leave me. He will be there. Huh? When we have when we have a situation like that, isn't it wonderful to have a, a faith in this time of of pandemic, in this a time of suffering and uncertainty? Uh, a, a true story being was was uh, given to me of uh, a sister. Who got sick with COVID-19, and she said, "No, she said, I cannot just imagine myself being in the hospital, being sick. She survived, huh? but being sick with without faith, I, I I cannot just imagine. It was faith that really made me strong and persevere uh, in that difficult time. Okay, but more being." When, when we realize who we are, and when we have the faith, uh, faith and, and gift of faith in us, and we nurture it being in ourselves, that we, we are uh, even in poverty and difficulty, that we are a, a child of God. We, have, we are the image and likeness of God. Then in the darkness of suffering, we become the light. We become God-like as it were. We become giving in, in the situation of the like, typhoon, recent two typhoons in the pandemic. We are so powerful in a sense. We are, we, darkness cannot defeat us because we can still give. Like in Davao being, in suffering and uncertainty, I'm really, Deep in my heart, I wag na lang tayo mag-campaign for food packs. Everybody, everybody is in difficulty. But when we made, when we made the campaign, I'm deeply touched by the God-like, Christ-like reaching out to others because of faith. Because of faith. So, uh, very to me, very important. To, otherwise, being the darkness would overcome us. We, we become beasts in the very difficult, but, but, but yes, it is meaningful to have the gift of faith in times of suffering and uncertainty. We become, we shine out as, as children of God. Pag pinag-uusapan po Archbishop ang 500 years, talagang hindi mahihiwalay ang konsepto ng colonization sa evangelization. We will never be able to dissociate the colonization of the Philippines from its evangelization, Archbishop. How would you suggest we view or reconcile these two aspects of the spread of our faith? Okay, very, very important point. Uh, colonization, uh, not always, naman, but most, most of the time has the negative connotation. Diba bing? Negative colonization. They, they came to, to use us, uh, to, to take advantage of us, etc., uh, etc., et without respecting or being a people, para tayong second class, di ba? Et cetera, et cetera. And then, ang evangelization was just a, a secondary thing. Uh, in the name of evangelization, the purpose really was colonization. I don't know. But my, my, what, what is my take on this thing? Uh, first is truth. Uh, go to the truth uh, in, in this case. Uh, it is, I, I must admit, I think we must admit that there were certainly abuses. There were, there are uh, uh, narration, narratives of horrible uh, abuses. True, we, we cannot deny that. But my thing is, and, and with, with some bishops, this is the time now to report the truth and, and many, many good works of the 
frailes, ah, frailes with the church people accompanying the the colonizers, the soldiers, the the governors, uh, that, that. but there there are really works and intent of the frailes, the first missionaries reaching out to the Filipino, uh, and, and 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 even the first church people, ch native priests, as they would call, call it, they were not the Fridays, but they were, they were really a pro-Filipino. Uh, they, they, they saw the sufferings and situation of our people. So therefore, back to what I said, what is your take on this? This is the time now to do good reporting, uh, to, to allow history to speak out. Uh, concrete, concrete being, one of the activities for 2021 would be, and watch out for this being, would be a series of online lectures, sessions of church historians. I am very sure that the slant of this, not naman to parang propaganda or parang apologetics, but just simply in a, uh, in a strict historical sense, narrate to us the good intents of the evangelizers. Na truly naman for the good of the Filipino people. So the truth is very important here, Dean. Archbishop, your pastoral letter echoes a Vatican decree that notes that our church is missionary by nature and you urge all of us to be missio ad gentes here at home and in other countries. Please explain this to us, Archbishop. The gift of faith in its very essence uh, would move us to share. Uh, the gift of faith is good news, good news. And uh, there, uh, we want to sh share it. It, has, it is not to be kept uh, to, to, to follow the great patterns of the history of salvation. God sent, uh, that, that verb, sent his son and his son walked with us, reached out to people. He became, he is the other, but came to us, came to us and, and became one of us in a sense. Uh, so the church is like that, always being sent, always going out. Now, when you, you said, when I wrote in the note here, uh, you read carefully the, the, uh, the letter uh, para bang not to be self-referential according to the Pope uh, lives within herself or herself for herself, di ba? Hmm. So, uh, uh, I wrote another line here that we cannot always be like those preaching to the choir. <laughs> we just among ourselves so preaching to the choir uh, para self-referential. But we, we ought to go out, go out, send to be. So that's the nature of, of the church, patterned by, by Christ himself. So missionaries, yeah. Uh, again, how can, it be, how can it be good news when you, it, 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 being analyzed? How can be it, it be a good news when it is not shared? And that's why, right. how can it be news when it is not shared? That's as it is. So, uh, the faith is described also as good news coming to us by its very nature. If we take it seriously, being that's why by its very nature, we're missionary. Proclaim, proclaim as if we cannot contain the joy and that will come out later. We cannot contain. So that, that's it. Uh, and that's why Pope Francis said, go to the periphery. That's good news for them where it is. There's darkness there. Go, go out. Let bring the light to them. But if you don't, you keep the light. You're preaching to the choir or self-referential. So, but by, by by its very nature, the church is missionary, like Christ. Pope Francis is you now. You know he from from beautiful uh, theories, theology, catechism. He goes to the practical. He says here. Uh, 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 I hope I can. I dream of a missionary church that is a missionary, that is a missionary impulse capable of 
transforming everything. So that ini very important and speaking to saya. This is so that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitably channeled. Very polite word, but transform <laughs> can be transformed uh, for the evangelizing of today's world rather than for self-preservation. So being a missionary transformation is to, to look at everything. Imagine time, schedule, way of doing things. That is characterized as forward-looking for others, to reach out to others, to proclaim the good news. Uh, so for example, Pope Francis would, would start with, with a very, very common thing. He said, not exactly uh, uh, the, in the following words, but somebody would come to the office and would say, uh, we want to be to receive a sacrament of marriage, or we want to be our child baptized. And then right away say, do you have this? Do you have, can you follow this? Do you have these requirements? Instead of saying, and first line is, wow, wow, you want to receive the sacrament of marriage? You want to, your child to baptize? Para agad na mga, mga guidelines. No? So even with that uh, e e example, no? and spirit, it shows in the way how we talk. It shows in the way we make remarks. Na very cold sa office ang mga tao. Hindi man, wow, lalaki, babae ang anak. How old? Uh, is that the first one, second one? Oh, do you have the requirement now? Nang, ano, oh. <laughs> so even that small, I think Pope Francis starting from that small thing, uh, I was writing, I wrote here, be, even formation in the seminaries. The formation can be self-preferential, the tone can be preaching to the choir. Instead of starting young with our seminarians, with the religious, uh, even formation in parishes, in the self-preferential, but that, that color, that, that tone of, of the many talks that we have in the parish is that going out, going out. Uh, but, but the going out being, I must be careful, uh, in, in the pastoral letter, you go out because you have seen something. You go out because you have experienced him. You go out because you have been gifted. You go out and gifted to give. Ibayan ang same thing. Gifted. You you give, you go out, you become a missionary because first and foremost, you have been, you have seen the good news and experienced the good news. In a sense, it's 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 a move from a passivity in a sense though, to to yeah. really taking action yeah. and then you know heeding that call yeah. again as you put yeah. out in, in in your your pastor letter to be missionary disciples. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. From that, Archbishop, what's yes. your vision for the church, particularly the Filipino segment of the church? Yeah, uh, that's a difficult take, uh, being, but my, to put it simply, especially in this year, Mission um, Agentis, and flowing into the celebration proper under the theme Gifted to Give. Parang repetitious na ito that let this time be and everything offered to us. Let this moment in Philippine church history, this moment of the Filipino people, uh, to take in seriously with, with emotion, affection, knowledge that truly this is a gift. A gift. And this gift is not for me, is not to be kept by me, but it has to be shared to others. Uh, I, I, I just put it into concrete terms that a husband and wife going to church, let's put a very simple husband and wife would not be 
using a word, be passive. Uh, parang satisfied na wow, we have we have done our Sunday obligation and we feel nice with our children. But always asking, today, Sunday, what a beautiful, beautiful gift. What can I do for others? To whom and with whom will I share this? Now, if Pope Francis, it is not just only for your family. Again, that is self-preferential and that has been there. Uh, very controlled, uh, uh, you are together, but that 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 hint, that parang bias that when you ask, what can I do? It is for those who are on the other side. So I'm not talking here of priests, religious, but talk about an ordinary, that's a good family. But I like your word. Most likely you feel good because you have, you have sat in church, you sang, you received communion. But afterwards, medyo tapos na. And if there's something to be done with your children and immediate family. What about raising the bar? <laughs> raising the bar. That, yes, what, what can I do? What can I do? Uh, always. How, uh, I am really sent. I have this gift. What can I do? I, that's the way being I would I would uh, answer. So, with the many activities, it boils down to that, to that essence of a missionary disciple. Uh, oh, no. But, meron kayo isang napangang linya. And it says, Unfortunately, there are some Christians whose lives <laughs> seem like Lent without Easter. <laughs> Lent without Easter. <laughs> I, I cannot tell you. Ano I, I smile because you like I like that too. No? Uh, uh, let me also re react to that. When I read that line, I, I really smiled. Uh, I don't know if it is a good uh, uh, reaction. Pope Francis uses very colorful lines. No? Colorful lines that would really you know, wake you up. Yeah, you're like looking around like Lent without people without always in perpetual Lent walang Easter. Uh, you know, uh, when I read that line, what came to my mind uh, being was book by written and those who are familiar with the writer, uh, a book written by uh, Thomas Green, a Jesuit. And uh, uh, a spiritual writer no, in the Philippines, huh? um, she, he is known. Huh? And pardon me, I forgot the title of the book, but I remember the chapter of the book. Chapter. The chapter is Victory Already Won in Christ. Uh, victory Already Won in, in Christ. We have that victory. We don't have to walk around always. Let, wala pang siguro what is the ending. <laughs> uh, we walk around still carrying our cross but thanks be to God thanks be to God we know the ending now that's part of it we know the ending clear we know the ending we know that Easter is coming for the first the, those who walk with Jesus ay walang klaro pa we are fortunate that we know that Easter is coming victory already won in Christ now, another image uh, being that came to mind, with that, I know you like that, but I like that. Uh, there was, uh, details I forgot, there was a philosopher, an, a non-unbeliever, non but he started knowing and reading about the gospel. He was very attracted. He was very attracted to the gospel, to church, but mainly the gospel. But when he, then, he made the move to enter a church or attend a church. And he looked around and he saw the people there, like what Pope Francis wrote. Their faces look like Lent. And he got out of the church. If that's the case, I think I have put, I put on hold kumuna ang bilip ko. Parang always Lent. Parang walang hint of Easter. So, uh, this is beautiful because we, we walk around, be there, carry the cross, 
but with the great advantage of faith that also we walk around with so much faith and joy that we will win victory already won in in Christ. Now we we take we take this seriously. That that is another one. Faith is a gift. We did it, this is not a mindless parang walang klaro na ending. Oh, we know very well the ending. But the, the question is, can we persevere? That is why we need one another. We need missionaries abroad and here that go on. We will. We will reach the goal. So Easter, we walk around. Yeah, spirit of land sacrifice, but also with a good hint, certainty that Easter is coming. Archbishop, it's all very, very, very appropriate for our very polarized times. May sinabi kayo, mercy is God's identity card. Mercy is the greatest of all virtues. All the others revolve around it. Mercy is the very foundation of the church's life. All of her pastoral activity should be caught up in the tenderness she makes present to believers. Nothing in her preaching and in her witness to the world can be lacking in mercy. The church's very credibility is seen in how she shows merciful and compassionate love. Yeah. I find it very appropriate, yes, particularly yes, now, na means and particularly if you, if you, if you uh, you know if if you tune in too much to social media. It tends to be an either or, very binary. Ang ating ang ating ano, either tama ka or mali. Uh-huh. Eh, kung yeah, mali ka, yeah. mali ka, hanggang jan ka dalang. Mm-hmm. Kung if you don't agree with us, kami ang tama, kayo ang mali. Uh-huh. If you don't agree, wala kayo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so parang ganun eh. So mm-hmm. I guess I'm asking you right now, why is it important more than ever to talk about mercy now? Archbishop. Yes. Uh, okay. The, the, it is uh, next to joy uh, that you in the pastoral letter, hallmarks of going out, being sent, and hallmark is joy. Yung, yung walking around uh, Lent, but sure of Easter, not without Easter. Joyful faith, a faith that is trusting, that is confident of the outcome. Second, doing mission with the hallmark of mercy. And uh, the letter is well written. Uh, people help the CBCP to write it, uh, write this password letter. It, it points out that the hallmark of God in his very nature is mercy and compassion. There's a book uh, uh, attributed to Pope Francis. Uh, the name of God is mercy. Uh, identity ginamit uh, dito, but the name of God is mercy. Ano uh, bing? Uh, um, my sideline is a little bit liturgy, so I like I pay attention to the text of, of the mass. Now, up until the Pope Francis uh, uh, declared a year of mercy, and he wrote this, no? the praise of mercy, the, in mentioned in the in the uh, in the pastoral letter. It, it really opened my, my mind. The name of God is mercy. The face of God, the, the face of mercy. In the mass alone being, text of the mass, my Lord, often repeated that attribution to God is mercy and compassion. So therefore, if that is what we bring with joy in our mission, if God is the good news, our experience of God as mercy and compassion, uh, that should color our mission. That, that should be it. The church should be first and foremost in her activities o oh, gamit ng mga young people. And the thing, <laughs> and the thing ng church should be mercy and compassion. It is, to me, the undertext uh, being is Always patient, tolerant na mga uh, opposing views. Patient, tolerant, 
always willing to walk an extra mile. Uh, so that, uh, again, I'm the thing merciful and uncompassionate. Uh, I am convinced with that line, the church's credibility in front of the world today will be greatly tested whether Andatinya is mercy and compassion. I am just so thankful to the Pope for having underlined this. Of course, we teach properly seven sacraments, the beauty of baptism, the beauty of the community of the church, our love for Mama Mary, all of this. But if you wrap this up, always the the uh, aroma that I heard that you order the aroma and the thing and nature ng church and body language and body language ng church is mercy and and compassion. I cannot I cannot put more words to that. It's very true, very true. Yeah. But being let, let me add no, uh, let me add. We have to revisit again and again the the revelation of that mercy in the scriptures. Be because in the scriptures, we might be too confident that kuha na natin, <laughs> para bang gets na natin na sa mga ang gets natin. But if we go, we go to the scriptures, ah, ang sinabi niya na, be merciful like my father was merciful. It's always a challenge because we fall short many times akala natin kuha na natin ang ang like the prodigal son <laughs> let's talk about this uh, that merciful father prodigal son by all standards being to, to me reading it seriously uh, reading seriously i think may dala sa nang dos por dos yung papa uh, may kahit, kahit na lang mga three lives na gago ka uh, stupido ka na anak walang kwenta ka na anak at these three lines naman lang. Diba? Diba? Pardon me for saying that okay, the, the son was really a, a bad son. But imagine God. The, the father in the, in, the, in, in, in the story was parang forgetful. Almost he did not listen to the, to the, to the son. Ang, ang lumabas, his mercy and compassion, the overflowing grace to the sun. So we need uh, again to revisit the very source of what we talk about the scriptures, the many stories in the scriptures, Old and New Testament, so that and the thing ng simbahan, all of us, all of us in the church should be uh, mercy and compassion. Please talk to us about your call to action, Archbishop, your conclusion. I, I like this. Uh, line no and then i'll give it my interpretation no? uh, with pope francis we ask two graces of the lord let us not allow ourselves to be robbed of missionary vigor ah that's right oh what i've called yung sinabi ko na may this year really touch our hearts and become enthusiastic what can i do hindi lang passive i i, I use again what you said what, what can I do? So, missionary bigger. No? Let, let us not allow ourselves to be robbed of missionary enthusiasm. So that the call to action. You know, I, I, can, I can cite big scenarios here being, but I'll really go back to my couple in the views of the church. Now, always asking, what can I do for others? What can I do to those who are not in my comfortable circle, bringing the good news to them? Now, but also uh, the call to action. You said there's there's a, the title of this pastoral letter being is becoming Jesus's missionary disciples. That's becoming becoming. So I would add to what I said now. The couple, people on, in, on the views, views of the church, na, the sanas, parang self, 
uh, automatic from 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 the self that the urge the a, a bit of urging and uh, don't wait to be told but urging to become to avail of all the uh, resources offered especially in this in this ju jubilee year uh, there will be what, what i call resources activities but internally so that sabine call to action so that from the inside one would say i would like to become i would my family we would like to become missionary disciples taking care that my action our action will be marked with joy and mercy so becoming make that a, a kind of keyword i would like to become i i don't want to be told ako ako mismo i'd like to become a missionary disciple you know being it's it's i now i'm i'm tigulang na matanda na 69 years old but uh open times open times there is the program there are things to do but many times the unseen and nobody can tell you that that first sacred moment in your heart in this job yes lord i would like to become i think that's the uh, but the inner inner call that i'd like us to to take now in this to answer uh, in this uh, great moment in our history i just want to touch on that because you mentioned two things the way you missionary vigor and missionary yeah. enthusiasm Yes. Yung vigor kasi parang ang dating sa akin, it, it's a function of your own strength. Diba? That, that, that's physical vigor. Yes, diba? yes. Yeah. Kaya mo yes. na. Diba? Oh. Pero yung enthusiasm, <laughs> that's yes, really internal. Sa loob yan. Internal. Internal. Oh, yes. Yan, yes. Eh. You, yes, you know, yes. Vigor yeah. can be as a result of you know exercise, constant yes, practice. Yes, diba? yes, yes, it's, 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 yes, yes. it's really born out of physical yes, strength. Yes. Pero yung enthusiasm, it's it's that smile that you put in habang napapagod ka. Yes, yes, yes. Yun ang ano eh, yun ang uh, yun iba dun eh. Yes, you can be yes, vigorous, uh, pero still be wearing that long face of lint. Uh, <laughs> you put it correctly. So the, that, that's why intentionally the combination is there. No? A vigor and enthusiasm. Yes. In 500 years, we Filipinos seem to have come full circle. Cardinal Tagle is now at the Vatican as the prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. Father Gerard Temonera III, OP, now heads the Order of Preachers, the Dominicans, worldwide. And at a Simbangabi Mass at St. Peter's Basilica last year, Pope Francis himself recognized the role of overseas Filipinos in evangelization. Your thoughts on this, Archbishop? Thank you. If I may add, being with the, like you mentioned, Cardinal Tagle, Father Timoner of the OPs. Uh, uh, some years, a few years, not, not too long ago, uh, Father Antonio Pernia of the Society of Divine Word, That's Father right, Tony Pernia, was the yes. first uh, non German uh, Superior General of the SPD. That's so right. so uh, right. there already, you know, these, these are examples. But um, bottom line at this point is, you said, role of overseas Filipinos. Uh, there, there have been many stories about, uh, wonderful stories about, about, about this, that uh, uh, we are happy to hear that the, the, the Filipinos, most, I, I, I would say, would not only bring their skills as engineers or, or skills doing household work, uh, and professionals, they don't only bring their their uh, smile, they don't bring their, their good nature, good PR, good relationship, but they bring their pain. That's the way I would summarize it. Uh, to put it in a like like humorous way, uh, I heard uh, in Italy that the the, the the Italian families would like they, they would say. Uh, we would like to get uh, uh, Filipinos to be part of our like, uh, household to, to be to help them. Uh, uh, why? Because 
three three uh, reasons. No? <clears throat> they are good workers. Magaan, uh, smiling. They're good workers. Number two, they can teach our children English. <laughs> Number two, but more importantly, they teach our children the faith, the prayers. How to being, how to, how to. Uh, but, but not only that, I've heard of stories that it is not just this, what I call private thing happening in families, but Filipinos are invigorating parishes, communities in many parts of, of uh, the West, I would say, and uh, sh showing joyful faith, joyful faith uh, uh, to, to, to the world. So I, I cannot be repetitious, but truly the role of overseas Filipinos in mission, in mission, parang in place na, uh, they are there na. They, they don't have to be sent, but to be sent na lang, ang sabi mo, with, with vigor and with enthusiasm in their hearts. At this point, uh, Bing, I, I'd like to cite the importance of pastoral animators to these Filipinos, especially in places where, uh, there are places where they are well taken of by the local church. Yeah, I would say, by and large, uh, they, they are given attention. But there are places where very difficult for them to be to be guided. Wala silang walang parish priests. So we have a program in the CBCP also uh, that there are Filipino chaplains, all of lacking, but very much lacking, to animate them to con continuous missionary formation. Uh, in uh, they are a good number of them are also hard up. They are they are working very hard. They send money home, but surprisingly, being with my little experience, my little experience now, they Filipinos by and large, they find time for the church and they go to church. Now I I I like to end this portion of mine. I was once in for for a meeting, huh? not not for lecture. I once in, I was once in the UK, and I was in uh, Liverpool, lugar na mga Beatles, because I the, the 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 meeting was there close to that, and I had a classmate who was working for for a Filipino priest working for cruise ships. Liverpool is a big harbor place. Okay, uh, so I was there now. Uh, two scenes. In the cathedral, I attended Mass, Sunday Mass. Uh, I wasn't able to arrange. I just attended Mass. Uh, then came in old couples, English couples, slowly. Some of them were, have, had, had walkers come in. Uh, and then very few. Just mga 10 minutes before, before Mass, came Younger Filipinos, very abdic, <laughs> very maliksi. Oh, they would, oh, oh, very, and they, they fit up the church. And even by body language, they were really alive. And I felt very proud, very proud. Now, second, the same, the same, the same place. Uh, uh, I was invited to in the afternoon. There was a special mass for Filipinos, not not in the church, but it was parang conference hall downstairs, two o'clock and um, misa. And a, a, an Eng English nun, uh, a sister, was there before two o'clock on time. She was there waiting now. And very proper, very, very soft voice. Yeah. Good afternoon, Archbishop. I hear the song. Very quiet, very proper. Before two o'clock, sabak na, maingay. The Filipinos came with their guitar, shouting, laughing, practicing the songs. And the face of the sister, parang she, she was kind of uh, prim and proper. Walang, walang, but, but when the Filipinos arrived, her face of bloom into a big smile. She was happy with this kind of spirit. So these are just small examples, big, very small examples of the, the 
given na. They are all over the world, given opportunity and role for our overseas Filipinos to bring the faith or enrich the faith or invigorate the faith in other, other places. Archbishop, may you please lead us in prayer. Almighty God, in Jesus, your Son, our Savior, we have come to know you. And we have become we, community and family of your children. We have become your church, your people. And that faith and that community, thanks be again to you, is so strong in the Philippines, so vibrant. Lord, in your wisdom, you allowed that Christian faith to be brought to the Philippines 500 years ago. Truly a gift. But help us, please, in this momentous time in our history to truly realize that it is a gift. And because it is a gift, you shared us that gift. We would, able be, we would be able to share in turn this gift to others. Lord, you know us, the Filipino people, in terms of faith, in terms of our belief, the mother of your son, the Blessed Mother has been there accompanying us. Always bring us close to Jesus, close to the church. Again, in this important time of history, we are convinced that the Blessed Mother is always accompanying us. Lord, as in a pastor letter, bless us with more vigor in our being missionary disciples, in our becoming missionary disciples. And also give us enthusiasm, vigor and enthusiasm in our minds and hearts as we become missionary disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Undercovered, the podcast with Ben Kimpo.